All right, so uh, welcome to the Bookmap platform details. The risk disclaimer, uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. So uh, find out more about Bookmap at bookmap.com. And uh, if you become a member there, uh, you get access to a lot of the free resources there. Uh, and you can always reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Okay, so let me show you the website uh, and uh, come here and let's click on explore. There's some intro videos here that just go, they're very short, but go over what book map is showing you. Uh, so uh, you might want to start with those. Uh, and then uh, let's come down to the pricing tab uh, so uh, you guys understand what you're getting here. Uh, there's two versions of book map. There's the basic and there's the advanced. Okay, 49 per month and 99 per month, they are billed quarterly. Okay, but you get a 14-day trial period uh, with either of them. Uh, so um, uh, I would uh, recommend going with the advanced, uh, and um, then uh, if uh, you don't like all the uh, add-ons, then that's the distinction between the two. Uh, these these uh, add-on indicators and, and the ability to trade from the chart which is a significant advantage. Uh, the uh, If you don't like all that, you don't need all that, uh, then you can just go with the basic, okay? Uh, and um, you won't get another trial, but uh, you've at least tried the advanced uh, and then go with the basic, okay? Uh, let's see here. So there's the, the, the other the other two products you see here, the, it's the basic and advanced with a DX feed. All this is is just a package deal with DX feed. Now, DX feed, is only for U.S. equities, okay? It's a special that we have. Uh, we're not a broker, but we partnered with somebody who offers uh, access to U.S. equities. Uh, for those of you in the know, uh, it is with uh, NASDAQ Total View, okay? And also NASDAQ Last Trade. All right, so uh, you, if you have the basic or advanced version, you can still get DX feed, okay? You'll just subscribe as an add-on. Uh, and uh, it costs just, uh, I think, $10 more uh, a month, so uh, you get a, a small uh, discount with the package deal. But uh, this is more exclusive here for the equities guys. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, John already has a question. Is there a uh, futures data feed and bookmap package that you do? No. Okay. Let me go over that. Uh, you will need to have a data provider. Okay. These are uh, how you the, the methods you can connect uh, some of the brokers or broker partners uh, as well as uh, data providers. Okay, so stage stage five trading, uh, you you can uh, connect with uh, uh, many different ways uh, with them. Uh, they offer many of these connections. Uh, there's CQG, Rhythmic, uh, Gain Capital or o, it's OEC data uh, through Ninja Seven and or Eight. Uh, goes through the API. Okay, now Bookmap is a platform, so um, uh, we're just like NinjaTrader or Trading uh, or TT or Trading Technologies. Uh, but um, uh, the uh, we we can also connect through the API of Ninja Trading Technologies and also interactive brokers here. Okay, through their Trader Workstation. Okay, otherwise, just like you connect your Ninja or your TT, you will go through a data provider like Rhythmic or, or CQG or Gain Capital or IQ Feed or, or Transact. Uh, and uh, we offer all of those and you can go directly into Bookmap that way. Okay, and then uh, this is Dev Experts and NASDAQ here for connecting uh, to the DX feed that I mentioned. There's also Tradevate, which is a web-based uh, and they also offer a uh, connection with CQG desktop uh, version of Bookmap as well. Okay, so uh, you have that flexibility with the web version. Okay, the web version um, is this a, a different, a little bit different product. Uh, uh, the um, uh, desktop version has more more features. Or it's uh, uh, yeah, there, there's there's more <laughs> a lot more stuff that going on with the desktop version. Okay. Uh, all right, so that is the uh, connection methods, and uh, you will need to have that, all right? Okay, uh, just some other resources, and then we'll, we'll get right into Bookmap, okay? So uh, you can follow us here on Twitter to get up-to-date information, and just information you hear, you can see some tweets about Apple, 
uh, you know, from just uh, 30 minutes ago. So uh, I would um, uh, recommend uh, following us here, and you'll get you'll get um, uh, you know most up-to-date information here about Bookmap. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, so you'll get the most up-to-date information when a uh, new video is uh, is uploaded. Okay, so on our YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, for the new guys here, uh, let's just take it really slow, okay? So uh, I would watch this intro video uh, and then um, start to watch some of these, like the Bookmap 6.0 overview. There's a playlist here, Features and Components, and just uh, start to understand what Bookmap is uh, through all the various features, okay? And then just start with a couple of these um, order flow video snippets, just uh, two to three. Uh, and start to understand what what uh, Bookmap is showing you, and and these are concise videos that uh, go through phenomena that we see here during these webinars. Okay, there's also an educational course here that uh, this is about education. Okay, it's uh, uh, not exclusive to just Bookmap, uh, but uh, obviously we show Bookmap to very visually demonstrate uh, order flow. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, uh, that uh, will help you understand these markets today. And you can also view the recorded webinars here. All right. Okay, well, let's jump into Bookmap and uh, what is it showing me? Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. And uh, we'll take a look at oil, uh, you know, these summer months, uh, they, uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of back and forth, uh, and uh, we want something maybe it has a little more volatility in it. Uh, and uh, all right, so I'm going to start off here, uh, and we're just going to start uh, with um, a very simple chart, and I'm going to take uh, layers of data off of Bookmap. Okay. And um, let's see here, I think I've got, is this a one minute chart? Yeah, let's go with a five minute chart. Okay, and let's zoom out. Okay, so what you're looking at here in Bookmap uh, is a five minute chart, okay? It's a candlestick chart. We're all very accustomed to looking at a candlestick chart, okay? Uh, if you're not, it's very simple. Uh, these are, it's a five minute period here represented by this candlestick. And uh, it's open, high, low, and close uh, of that period. Right? Now you can start to read the speed uh, and, uh, of, of that period. You can start to read uh, maybe buying pressure, selling pressure with the wicks, um, or lack of that, uh, et cetera. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of good information here. Uh, however, uh, there's, a, there's a problem here. Uh, and the problem is that uh, there's a lot of information it is not giving you. And we're making financial decisions based on uh, a lack of knowledge here on candlestick chart. Okay. So there is the volume sub column here or sub chart that we have that shows the volume that took place on these candlesticks. Uh, and that, that's helpful. Uh, now we're starting to understand a little bit more of what's going on. But we still don't know where that volume took place how much uh, and um, what type okay uh, within that five minute period so uh, lots of information just in the volume alone that we have no clue whatsoever by looking at this candlestick chart okay and that that's uh, we're going to be making a pre pretty um, uh, 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 uninformed trading decisions uh, without knowing that Okay, so I'm going to start to layer on uh, some information here, and we'll just look at the five-minute, uh, or I'm sorry, the best bid and offer. Okay, and let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so now all I have here uh, on the chart is the uh, the best bid and offer. Okay, historical here. So we can see um, this candlestick here, this period. Let me zoom in a little bit further. Uh, Richard, uh, I yes. Um, uh, I, I recall very well. I was I was looking for you in the webinar here, um, and um, uh, we're going to go over uh, some of the columns data here. All right, I need to go over the beginning here though of what uh, uh, what you're looking at, uh, and then um, uh, we'll get to the columns data. Okay. All right, and uh, we maybe we'll get into the uh, the delta uh, more in the, if you want to. Uh, 
uh, come to the advanced uh, webinar. The link there uh, is in the chat. Okay, I'll put it in again. Uh, there you have it. So you can you can come in another 15 or 16 minutes uh, to the beginning of that webinar. All right, and we'll go into more detailed analysis. Okay, but what you're looking at is that historical best bid and offer. Now we're already seeing microstructure just by looking at this. Okay, you you do not see that this little double bottom here uh, in this candlestick at all. It's it's that information is is not recorded. Okay, so uh, that is already helpful, but let's put on the volume. Okay, now we're understanding where the volume and the, the traders are committed uh, within this area, okay, within this five-minute period. And uh, we can see very clearly uh, where they are, right? The, the big volume dots here uh, are showing us that. So we understand that uh, we're using the aggressor classification of volume, and let me zoom into this big dot here, and I'll show you. Okay, we can see all sorts of data and microstructure uh, information here. Um, so if I continue to zoom in, so I just want to show you the, um, uh, let's just find something kind of easy and clear. Okay, historical best bid and offer. A green dot represents a market buy that takes liquidity off of the best offer. Okay, and a red dot here represents a, an aggressive market sell that takes liquidity off of the best bid. Uh, and um, you can see that uh, if I zoom into, for example, this dot here, okay, I'm just using a hand tool and my uh, center mouse wheel to scroll in, look how Bookmap captures all of this data, okay? I guess that's, uh, that's about it. Um, but um, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we start to split apart every single transaction, okay? It's all recorded here in Bookmap. Uh, so um, now I know we're not we're not trading at these um, uh, millisecond levels here or microsecond levels, but um, uh, to understand where you're getting filled and what's going on in the market, well, this could, this can be helpful for uh, for debriefing uh, or for uh, you know your algorithmic trading uh, if you're if you're trading um, automated strategies. As I zoom out, we've uh, uh, just visually aggregated this dot into a bigger red dot, so you understand the overall. And we can use the um, rollover tool here uh, to, to give us exactly what happened here. So we get the date, the time, what was on the bid at that price level, and then the volume it traded. All right. Okay. So as I zoom out, we continue to kind of aggregate visually and graphically. And we can see here now the majority here was selling. All right. All right. So that's the volume. And... Um, uh, that is giving us a lot more insight here. Look at the five minute period. We can understand this is going to be trapped volume uh, because all of these sellers buying the breakdown here, or I mean, selling the breakdown here, as soon as this goes up and goes above this little microstructural range here, these guys are in panic. Okay. They're probably going to be looking to the, the weakest hands, they're going to be, uh, uh, they'll have their stop probably in this area. Uh, next level uh, up here, uh, and let's see if we get up there. Okay. Yes, we do. All right. And there'd be a nice, nice little level up here if we can get up there. And do we? Took a little while. No, we didn't. Okay. So sellers remained in control of that area here. All right. And, um, uh, and we can see the result of that control that they have. Okay, we make a new low. All right. So anyway, uh, we're starting to understand a lot more detail here uh, of what's going on. Okay, now you can combine that with your candlestick. That's good. But um, uh, now we'll get to the uh, the dome, and I got to move here pretty quickly because uh, we'll start the next webinar uh, shortly. All right. So uh, you guys all have access to it though. So uh, you know, just uh, you will need to. We will stop this one, and then use that link for the next one, though. All right. Um, okay. So now, knowing that the the volume where it traded and what type, uh, it, you know, who are the players and their commitment is is uh, very very important. All right. Uh, we finally got our our breach up here. Next target would be up here, maybe at uh, the figure around 50. All right. Um, and um, but we still don't know uh, about the auction. Where were they bidding and offering within this process here? And that's where usually where we go to a dome. Okay, most of us are very accustomed to looking at a dome, and it's here in Bookmap. It's the COB column. 
okay? Now you right click here and you can format these columns, okay? And uh, you, you can show bars, bars and numbers, numbers only. Uh, I like bars only for this one. Uh, and then this one I like to have as numbers and split out. Okay, so now I can see the depth here on the bid and the depth here on the offer. These are traders lining up, providing liquidity to buy at these levels down here and to sell at these levels here. This is good information. This is the current state of the market. Okay, so we can understand, wow, they're okay, there's a lot of people that want to buy down here at uh, maybe uh, uh, 49.75, and the majority of the sellers are up here, uh, you know, around this uh, 87 level or so. All right, however, there's a problem here with this as well. And this data is fleeting. As soon as these number ch numbers change, that information is gone. And you're going to have to remember all of that. Uh, and it gets rather tedious to remember all of that. And that's where Bookmap solves the problem with the heat map. Okay. So this window is the current market window. You see your best bid and offer in real time here. Last traded volume is this number. And now you have this heat map grayscale uh, that shows you a graphical representation of the liquidity here. Okay, so when you see it get brighter, or that then there's more liquidity being um, uh, that's being added into the book. Uh, if you see these areas get darker, they are pulling. Okay, where it gets interesting is this live window here. We record that data and then we transpose it onto the chart. All right, so now you have a history of that auction, and we have some interesting stuff already occurring here. We see a flip of the book uh, clearly. Uh, they were here with high liquidity on the uh, on the offer, and now they flip to the other side on the bid. Okay, and we can see that they're pretty getting pretty aggressive here on the offer up above as well. Okay, uh, before the figure. Uh, so, um, uh, what does it mean if liquidity gets pulled? It means that they don't want to trade. It just think about uh, think about the uh, the auction uh, model. Okay. Uh, you want to be a buyer in an auction at, uh, at a specific price for an automobile, okay? And uh, what if price starts to come down toward you and you're like, hmm, I, I don't really want to be a buyer now here. I want to be a buyer at a lower price. I don't think this is as worth as much as I previously thought. I'll just pull my bid and then uh, I'll bid at a lower level. And that's what uh, uh, this represents here, okay? And you can see the striations represent that. All right. Now we can start to gain the context of these auctioneers, okay, or participants. All right, the columns data. There are many different uh, book map columns that we have. All right, let me just uh, widen this out a little bit. Okay. All right, so uh, maybe that's a little too wide. Um, all right. So what you're looking at here, and, and a lot of domes have this, they have, um, you know, volume columns, right? So you can see the kind of volume profile here within the dome, okay? The SVP, we have many different types, okay? It's extensive, and you can continue to add, inserting new columns here, okay? Uh, and, and you can make a, a many different uh, columns, okay? Now the CVP, okay, let's, let's right click in this column, uh, and um, uh, you can see that I've got a chart range accumulated um, volume column. The, the data type here selected is volume. Okay, I can select it for something else as well. There are many different things to look at here. All right. So, for example, trades counter. Okay. Now I'm not looking at the volume. Now I'm looking at the number of trades. Okay, events that took place at these price levels. Okay. Now the CTC. Uh, is the chart range trades counter. The chart range is for this viewable range here. All right. And uh, if I zoom out, that range changes and it's reflected here uh, in the column. If I zoom in, the same thing. All right. You can see how similar volume and, and trades counter are. And it's interesting stuff. Uh, now let's remove one of those columns. We'll just hide it. Uh, and um, we can hide another one here, uh, or you know, you play around with these, uh, pick the different types of, of data. Now, if I change this into session range, okay, SVP, which I have over here, 
Uh, this gives me the uh, volume column since when I opened up Bookmap. Okay, so uh, it's not uh, only uh, exclusive to this chart range. All right. Okay, Richard, I know that was quick. Uh, you have any other questions on that? Uh, on the um, uh, well, let me let me go over one more thing here. Uh, a lot of traders uh, volume volume profiles are good, but you can see we have both uh, aggressors here accounted for within the, the uh, uh, volume column composite. Well, we since we have it, we can split it out. So we just format this column. Okay, so you right click in the column, choose format, uh, and then let's split out the data here. Play around with some of these. Okay, there's a VWAP. Uh, line as well. You can just show the bid uh, volume or the you know the ask volume, uh, but um, uh, or play around with bars and numbers. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Now we can also sp split it out. Okay. Now I've got the aggressor, uh, and I can I can compare one to the other. So I'm looking for momentum. Now I can also right click in here, and a lot of traders really like resetting this uh, this data. Okay, there are, you can reset it now. You can have a double click reset uh, in that column. So just uh, if I double click really quickly, you can see I just reset it. Okay, let's go back. And then uh, uh, other resets, uh, you can have a, a reset scheduled. Okay, for every single period, for a number of minutes, hours, or seconds, or at a specific time. So you can have it reset at like 9.30 or let's say 9 o'clock for oil uh, at the uh, cash open. All right, there is a conditional reset here as well, uh, but we'll, maybe we'll go over that another time. All right, uh, let's see, other questions, uh, Peter. Um, Yeah, you can make them more transparent. Um, what you can do with the candlesticks, okay, Peter's asking about configuring those candlesticks. So click on candlesticks, uh, and then you can play with the body width right here, okay? You can, uh, you know, make it bigger or smaller. Uh, I think 30 is the default. And then you just have the time period here, all right? So uh, that's uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, some of the uh, features that you have there, all right? Okay. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Richard, uh, if there's no liquidity at 49.90, uh, does that cause price to go higher or lower typically? 49.90. Okay. Uh, Richard, what you're asking about here is um, uh, starting to delve into kind of deeper discussion about the context and behavior of the participants in the auction, right? And um, uh, getting in. Uh, a little more into maybe even shorter term liquidity versus higher uh, longer term liquidity, right? And uh, how it works uh, with each other. Uh, you can see here that longer term liquidity is, you know, you can see them. They stayed in the book here. Then they flipped and now they're here at uh, 76, right? They're also up here at 50. And there's really no surprise there because it's the, uh, the figure here. Um, and um, but look at this high uh, liquidity here, very high uh, number of uh, contracts available on the bid and the offer, but it's shorter term. It's only in here for a little bit. Okay, you can see how it affects price. Right. So uh, this is um, uh, these these are uh, either uh, there's many players here, uh, but there's a lot more algorithmic activity between channeling between the uh, higher longer term liquidity in, in general, in general. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, uh, Richard, um, I think uh, your a question about liquidity is going to be multi-tiered. All right. So just because there's no uh, liquidity up here at uh, 49.90, um, it, it doesn't mean that um, but it just means that there's, there's, you know, they pulled or there's 158 contracts here, but uh, there's more here uh, at 85 right now, right? And it's aggressive too, because they're very close to the best bid and offer, right? And you can see how it's working. Uh, let me, let me take the candlestick off at this point, right? And, um, uh, the, the buyers here, the liquidity is here. Uh, the auction is going on. It's a battle, uh, and um, 
uh, you know, the, the sellers are saying like, I want to sell, I'm, I'm aggressive. I want to be a seller. Uh, and the, and the buyers here, well, uh, they can take them on and they can just press the market buy button and try to sweep the book to the upside. Okay. Take all of that liquidity. Look at these players though. Now we're have now we have this context. They were in here with high liquidity and they pulled. Okay. So did they have the intent to trade here? And the answer is no. Okay. Because they, they pulled the liquidity, right? It's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, and, um, but now we're starting to understand, uh, some of these players, uh, and the context within a structure, uh, a, a lot of different things. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, starting to understand the pressure, uh, in the market. Now think about, see higher term liquidity come in these areas. Uh, it skews the auction. Okay. All of a sudden there's massive demand or there's massive supply. And, uh, and price will, will respond to that. Uh, and um, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, basically how any auction is going to work, all right? Uh, let's see here. Okay, I've got to go here. I've um, got uh, two questions that I can go through quickly. So if the liquidity remains uh, for the sellers, typically happens uh, as price drops. Um, it's contextual. Uh, Richard is, is more complex uh, and uh, come to the next one and we're going to read the liquidity and the, the, uh, the context. All right. Uh, and it's, it, this is one, one thing that is important to, to say here uh, is that just because there's high liquidity, it just, it just means there are a lot of contracts available. Okay. It doesn't mean that the buyers or sellers can't take them on. Okay, uh, it just, we want to understand the context of, of those buyers and sellers though. And that's what uh, we, we want to read, okay? It's not a binary indicator here. Uh, this is the marketplace and this is the market unfolding here uh, in front of us. So we want to understand that context uh, and um, uh, that's, the, that's the key here. All right. Uh, market making algos uh, is the shorter high term liquidity. Yes, uh, Francisco. Um, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you can see it working uh, very, very, <laughs> very simply right here. Anyway, uh, guys, let's uh, let's end this up, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right. So uh, here is the uh, the link, and um, uh, join me in the next uh, webinar, and uh, also for tomorrow. All right. Okay. See you there.